29-year-old Daniel has a typical varied diet, except for one freaky habit. Daniel has been obsessed with raw meat for the past six years. He feeds his habit four times a week in pound after pound of raw beef, whole steaks pulled right from the packaging. Mm. Even raw chicken. It isn't really normal for people to have the eating habits that Daniel does. Every year, 76 million people contract foodborne illnesses. Of these people, 375,000 are hospitalized. And approximately 5,000 die. I'm really concerned that Daniel doesn't care that one day this could lead to death. In fact, Daniel scoffs at the thought of getting sick. It's absolutely mm -hmm. worth it to you, Brahmi, even though there's consequences. Consequences are minor. I like to pull it, I like to see the muscles. There's no real reason behind it besides I like the taste and the texture. It's like butter. Soon, Daniel was indulging his raw meat cravings several times a week, but he only shared his secret with his brother. I thought it was just something he was trying out, but then it started progressing to three or four times a week, and that's when I really started to get concerned. I don't think he does any type of preparation to it, washing it whatsoever. Horrified by the risks Daniel is taking, his brother Bryant has begged him to give up raw meat. Daniel disregards any health advice he gets regarding the raw meat that he consumes. Some products may contain bacteria that could cause illness if the product is cooked improperly. Whatever. I mean, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I have never gotten sick from eating raw meat, ever. I've been doing it for six years now. Mm. I just really don't want my brother to end up dying from that one bad piece of meat. It's gonna happen sooner or later. Since Daniel refuses to acknowledge the risks of eating raw meat, Dr. Dow and JJ want to introduce him to someone who can show him the danger he is facing. My name is Dr. Mike Terriger. I'm a board-certified family medicine physician. Raw beef is covered with microscopic organisms, viruses, as well as parasites. Okay. okay. Uh, they're not visible to the human eye, but nonetheless, they're there. Okay. Your first sign of eating a parasite or a virus or a bacteria could be death, and it's not a nice death. Not bad yet. If we showed you evidence, would that help you to make some changes in your life? I don't know. I like really like it. I really don't want to change. I see this cavalier attitude, this defensiveness. Daniel needs to put down his denial and accept that what he is doing has real consequences. To determine exactly what these consequences entail, Dr. Carragher wants to run some tests on one of Daniel's favorite foods. This is some ground chopped meat, which we got from your refrigerator. The test tab will reveal if E. coli is present in the ground beef. E. coli is incredibly dangerous. It starts with stomach cramps, diarrhea, headaches, fever, bloody stools. But then it can quickly progress to organ failure and death. While Daniel hasn't experienced the onset of these side effects yet, it doesn't mean they aren't in his future. We look at the tip of the test strips. If there's any discoloration at all, it means there's a positive test. Right. So, looks like our E. coli here has changed in color. So that's positive E. coli on the ground beef from your refrigerator, living on your chopping. You're putting yourself at higher risk for disease the more raw meat that you eat. One of the things that's gonna make this more real for you is to see what's really going on inside your body. We're going to take a stool sample, send it off to the lab, and see exactly just what's going on inside your gastrointestinal tract. It's very likely that Daniel could have a parasite and not even know it. JJ hopes the results of his lab tests will change his mind. You ready? Yes. I have no idea what's going on, but in the back of my mind, I'm kind of digging in for another fight. Uh, you do have a parasite? Just the word parasites is kind of strong, you know, and it stood out there. We're not sure whether it is something that's, you know, attaching into your small intestinal wall. Daniel needs to take these tests and go back and see his doctor. He needs to deal with this parasite. We watch for side effects here. We watch for any kind of diarrhea, nausea, headaches, fever. Daniel's attitude 
to a 180 degree shift as we started to review his test results and it all became very real to him. One more thing that's of interest on this test, rotting protein that hasn't digested sitting in your gut. Raw beef is covered with microscopic organisms, viruses, as well as parasites. Dr. Carragher wants to run some tests on one of Daniel's favorite foods. This is some ground chopped meat which we got from your refrigerator. The test tab will reveal if E. coli is present in the ground beef. If we look at the tip of the test strips, if there's any discoloration at all, it means there's a positive test. All right. So, looks like our E. coli here has changed in color. So that's positive E. coli on the ground beef from your refrigerator. Chicken carcasses so covered in fecal matter that researchers at the University of Arizona found more fecal bacteria in the kitchen, uh -uh, sponges, dish towels, and sink drain, than they found swabbing the toilet. Even after bleaching everything, twice, because people aren't preparing chickens in their toilets. <laughs> Frankly, you know that chicken juice isn't juice. It's essentially raw fecal soup. And in terms of fish hygiene, researchers swamped sushi for fecal bacteria. The National Food Standards Guidelines for Maximum Fecal Bacteria on Ready-to-Eat Food Items is 30,000. Okay, well, this is what they found. They also swabbed vegetarian sushi, avocado, and, and cucumber rolls, and found zero contamination, zero fecal bacteria. Detection of fecal residue on poultry carcasses by laser imaging. See, in slaughter plants, birds are gutted by a metal hook that often rips the intestines, so commonly the skin on chicken gets contaminated by these ruptures of the digestive tract during the evisceration process. So, what percentage of retail chicken carcasses are contaminated with fecal matter? 92%. But what if we only eat no antibiotic added you know, organic chicken? A comparison of these multidrug resistant bacteria in organic and conventional retail chicken meat, the first such, such study ever published. All of the conventional chicken samples were contaminated. However, the majority, 84% of organic chicken meat samples, were also contaminated. So 100% versus 84%. Organic is definitely better, but odds are we'd still be buying something that could make our family sick. But where do these antibiotic-resistant bacteria come from if they're not using antibiotics on organic farms? A possible explanation is that the day-old chicks coming from the hatcheries are already infected before they arrive, or they can become contaminated after they leave in the slaughter plant. Organic chickens and conventionally raised chickens are typically all slaughtered in the same slaughterhouses, so there may be cross-contamination between carcasses. Uh, you do have a parasite. Just the word parasites is kind of strong, you know, and it stood out there. Little baby pork tapeworms invading one's brain has become an increasingly important emerging infection in the United States, and it is the number one cause of epilepsy in the world. It's the most common parasitic disease of the human brain, and used to be only found throughout the developing world, with the exception of Muslim countries, of course. But that all changed about 30 years ago, and now it's increasingly found throughout North America. Besides seizures, the pork parasites may actually trigger brain tumors, cause an aneurysm, or psychiatric manifestations like depression. But who wouldn't be depressed having worms in their brain? can also result in dementia. Once they get into your eyeballs, though, you really do have to remove them, dead or alive. 
I've talked about pork tapeworms before, but what's new is that we now know that they may present as chronic headaches, either migraines or so-called tension headaches, even when the worms in your head are dead. What they think is happening is that our body tries to chip away at their calcified bodies, uh, and it may release bits of them into the rest of the brain, causing inflammation that could be contributing to headaches. The New England Journal of Medicine recently featured a case of some guy who must have had thousands of pork tapeworm larvae wriggling through his muscles. See all those little white streaks? Each one is a baby tapeworm. But that's why you, know, you can get infected by pork, since they get into the muscles, so cannibals might want to cook for two hours, too. In a meat eater's house, it is safer <laughs> to lick the rim of the toilet seat than the kitchen countertop. In a meat eater's house, it is safer <laughs> to lick the rim of the toilet seat than the kitchen countertop. In a meat eater's house, it is safer <laughs> to lick the rim of the toilet seat than the kitchen countertop.